I'm Betsy Okello. I'm a faculty member in the Marianne Remick Leadership Program and a member of the teaching and learning team for Notre Dame Ace Academies. And we are continuing to do our book talk series and we are all readers and writers. And we are really excited this month because uh, coming up, we have two big events. We have uh, World Read Aloud Day, which is Wednesday, February 2nd, and it's the 13th annual Read Aloud Day. Um, and we also have the start of Black History Month. So uh, today I'm going to talk about some books that are great choices for World Read Aloud Day. And then I also, uh, I read this book out loud uh, to kindergarten, first grade, and second grade students at Our Lady of Hungary earlier today. So I can give you their review of the book here in just a minute. Um, and I just really want to emphasize the importance of World Read Aloud Day, and it really does celebrate uh, the beauty of reading aloud um, and opportunities that we have as educators, as parents, as people with kids in our lives who we love to read to them with no other agenda, no comprehension questions, um, no hidden agendas, but just for the pure love of reading that we get to celebrate on that day. And um, so today I am really excited to talk about The Year We Learned to Fly. And this is the newest book by Jacqueline Woodson that actually just came out. Um, and the illustrator is Rafael Lopez. Um, and I love this book because it's about a brother and sister and how they learn to fly. Um, and so we see them at various scenes throughout the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter, and their experiences of when it's important for them to learn to fly. Um, and the part that I am gonna share with you today is about their grandmother who teaches them this lesson and how she first learned how to fly. So we read, my grandmother had learned to fly from the people who came before. They were aunts and uncles and cousins who were brought here on huge ships, their wrists and ankles cuffed in iron. But my grandmother said, nobody can ever cuff your beautiful and brilliant mind. So our people learned to fly, she said. They dreamed a thing and made it happen. Closed their eyes and flew away home. Lift your arms, my grandmother said. Close your eyes and remember, somebody, somewhere, at some point, had to figure out they could fly. So the students that I read with earlier today, I challenged them to uh, give us some suggestions about why teachers should share this book with students. And they said that they loved this book because it helped them uh, to not feel like they are stuck inside and that they have the ability to go outside in their minds whenever they wanted. Um, it helped them to feel good when they weren't feeling good in the beginning. Um, and it helped them deal with big emotions like feeling mad or frustrated and that they had a strategy now from this book that they could also use their imaginations to learn to fly like the characters in this story did. So thank you to the students of Our Lady of Hungary for helping me to share uh, why this book is, is such a great one to share with students. Um, and then the other one that I wanted to just mention is the first book that uh, Jacqueline Woodson and Rafael Lopez did together, uh, which is called The Day You Begin. And you can see there's a lot of beautiful similarities uh, among the two books. It'd be great to do a little author study with your students and to point out the similarities and differences. Uh, there's a great um, little hidden link uh, in this book that I won't spoil that, uh, that you could have your students look for. Um, and I love this book also because um, Jacqueline Woodson talks about times when we feel like we are alone and that we're the only one uh, in a room and that we're the only one feeling a certain way. Um, and I'm just gonna read this, um, these two pages to you because I think that it really helps us think a lot about our role as teachers and the importance of even the questions we ask, journal prompts that we might give to students and how uh, we may not think that they're excluding students, um, but that that could be an unintended consequence. So she writes, there will be times when the words don't come. Your own voice, once huge, now smaller. When the teacher asks, what did you do last summer? Tell the class your story. We went to France, Chayla says. These shells came from a beach in Maine. A boy named Jonathan holds out a jar filled with tiny shells so fragile, they look like they'll turn to dust in your own untraveled hands. My whole family went to India, Spain, South Carolina. Each souvenir a small triumph of a journey, their travels going on and on. And as you stand in front of that room, you can only remember how the heat waved as it lifted off the curb and your days spent at home caring for your little sister who made you laugh out loud and hugged you hard at nap time. 
You could only remember the books you kept on reading long after she had fallen to sleep. And in that room, where no one else is quite like you, you'll look down at your own empty hands and wonder, what good is this when other students were flying and sailing and going somewhere? So these two uh, books, I think, are excellent companions to one another and can really help uh, young students have really deep conversations uh, about issues that really matter to them and that should matter to all of us. Uh, so I hope that you will check these books out. I hope that you will all celebrate World Read Aloud Day, find some great books to read. You can check out all of the other videos in our series if you need ideas and suggestions for great read aloud uh, choices, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks.